All right, so what do we got here? It's a fan failure. Uh, when it came out, compressor was running, but it was making a, basically a noise to where this fan motor on the top of the compressor here wasn't running. What I needed to do was first thing you should do when you notice the air conditioner is on, you'll hear it making like a, a noise with the compressors running, but you won't, this fan won't be on. And what will happen very quickly is that this line will start to heat up because what this is evaporative core here is doing is it's basically getting the heat off of the compressor. So most of these, I'm not going to say everyone because it's never everyone. You're going to have a box here, pull the fuse out of here as quickly as possible to remove uh, current driving to your compressor over here. Once that's done. You're going to want to basically take a screwdriver, you know, something that's isolated so you're not going to shock yourself, and touch either ends of this uh, capacitor. That's to discharge this capacitor. You don't want any electricity in the capacitor. So once you're done with that, first thing I would always tell people is to replace this part because this is going to be your cheap one. And always replace it with exactly what you took out of it. Um, it doesn't work like a universal fit. You have to put the same one in that you took out. So you always start with that and see if that revives your fan motor because this capacitor feeds a starting charge to both your compressor and to your fan. So and when you're going to replace the fan, you're replacing this anyways. You should never just replace the fan. It should always be together because you don't know if this was the part that caused your fan to fail. Uh, there is such thing as a partially bad capacitor so you definitely want to replace this when you do that so since we're going to troubleshoot it anyways we might as well replace this first um anything over five years old you should just do it anyways it's a good preventive measure if you live in a hot climate like we do here and uh they're not expensive so it's not a bad idea to do because you'd rather be doing this when it's not too hot than when it's scorching outside and you have a failure the same thing with the fan motor so with this unit I actually have two compressors. I have this compressor here and this one here. This one feeds the downstairs and that one's the upstairs. Um, after I'm done replacing this fan unit and making sure that it's a good unit, I'm going to go and order another one and replace this one. Because they're the same age, you might as well get in front of it. If this one failed, there's a very good chance this one's next. So you might as well go ahead and go through the motions. To get to this though, you have a cover on it like that and it's just held in with um, I believe they're eight millimeter uh, lag bolt uh, lag screws and all you're gonna do is just pull the screws out oh, they're usually a mixture of both you have one of each and you're just gonna remove them from the corners here depending on who installed your unit sometimes it's done better than others some of them I mean this is a Goodman unit so it's kind of a middle ground units not the cheapest not the best not a train for sure um so i just went ahead and removed that it, of course not all even all the screws were there but that's just your installer and then once you're done with that you can actually go ahead and start removing all the screws all the way around the front the fan shroud across the top the wiring usually passes through here back to here and then it peaks back through here and that's where you're connecting so we'll have to take this fan motor out and so a lot of times you'll end up having to transfer some parts the best deal is to try to get a direct replacement part not a universal fit so that all the wire colors match and that it already has the connectors on it and i'll show you what i ordered and got for you know less than a hundred dollars so a lot of times though you will have to pull these uh, bolts out and transfer them to your new unit a lot of them it's not like a straight um straight across kind of thing so once i have this off i can actually you can see the unit the fan will just lift off here so what i want to do is look at that uh look at those wires you can see them those three wires right there and you just want to take and they'll be driving back to the capacitor and you'll just unplug them here same thing make sure your capacitor is discharged before touching your capacitor 
Um, you don't even have to touch your capacitor, honestly. You can use this needle nose and pull them. Just be careful, don't wiggle right here because you can very easily just snap off that and you have to replace the lead. And you know, you don't really have to do that if you just, you know, you're easier with it. So if you unplug here, you'll be able to feed the wire back through the back here to the motor assembly and then you can just lift the whole shroud off as one piece. Okay, so there's two areas where wires come in here. The, on this, in this case, the right side is where the fan wires come through. This would be a good time to get your phone out and just take a picture of what you're about to do. See, I'm holding the wires that I know I'm gonna to have to replace here. So I'll take my camera and I'll just hold it and take a quick photo of what I'm pulling apart. Now you do this enough times you don't need to do that, but for somebody who's doing this, not for the first time hopefully, but who's not done something like this before, you should always try to take photos. At this point, you want to go ahead and grab the wire at their bases and pull them up, not to wiggle them too much to damage the leads. And then you're just going to feed the wires back through so you don't tug on them as you remove the fan from the compressor. You can see this motor has seen better days. Okay, so there's four bolts on the other side that I'm going to have to take off here and that will uh, take it loose. Although I didn't damage anything, I wouldn't suggest using power tools here. You can easily just remove these with hand tools. So, those are all off except for one washer. The key here is to be gentle because these wires are very fragile and you don't want to damage or nick any of them. Okay, so this is our new motor here. You just want to compare it to your old motor. Make sure it looks, it has the same specs. Don't you don't crisscross stuff. Try not to use universal fit if you don't have to. Generally, you should be able to find an exact replacement for your unit, meaning that it matches all the specs. That's the ampage, the RPM, and so on and so forth, the gauge size of your um, your shaft and all that. So what we're gonna have to do here is take off our fan motor, and like I said, it's just holding. I'm already doing it wrong, you're not supposed to do that. So this stud right here that's holding it down, let's loosen it. I did it again, even though I know I'm just, don't pull on the fan blades. You want to use your strength and put it towards the center. You bend the fan blade, you're going to throw it off balance. And I'm just an idiot, and I know better, but whatever. So you just want to loosen that. You don't have to take it all the way out, you should be able to just take it loose. It should come off. That should be all it's holding. But. As stated, I don't know this yet, but this fan blade is the reason that this motor failed. It was off balance, which caused the bearing to fail on the actual motor itself. But I'll struggle here for you guys is laughter. So basically what you want to do, and I would suggest this to anybody, is if you have rust or it's an older fan motor already, let's just go ahead and replace both the fan motor, the fan uh, blade, and the um, capacitor and you won't have any of these headaches and sitting here messing with it and I know there's pullers but this is just not worth it just replace it I'm hoping that this saves people time as you can see I'm kind of pointing out what happens when the fan blade is off balance you can see that it's actually pulled it to where now it looks like it's basically ripping the motor out of the bearing so uh, the fan blades not expensive it I forget what it was it's like 40 bucks or something and it was way more balanced and it, I didn't understand why I would even bother trying to pull a fan motor off sorry pull a fan blade off and try to just reuse it you don't need to honestly if you're going to do this and you're already saving money i mean overall even with all the parts in i'm still less than half of what they were quoting me to go have someone come out and do it so at this point you want to go ahead and just clean out the inside since you have this all taken apart anyways i don't know how bird crap got in there but um it, as long as you have everything apart might as well take full advantage, clean all the dirt out of it. Always remember, go up and down. Don't go side to side because you don't want to damage the fins. You want to stay in the same direction that the fins pass in. So just go ahead and clean everything out. This helps the air conditioner become more um, efficient. Uh, I do not suggest using high pressure because you can damage the fins once again. They are, a lot of them are coated. You can actually strip the coating off of them on accident. And uh, now here I am going ahead and rewiring it. It's pretty straightforward. You're just following the same 
wires that were there before and you're just crimping on connectors on there. And like I said, still all in, I'm still at half the cost it would have cost to have somebody come in and do it. And they likely would have used a universal fit motor. Um, and as you can see, I also put weather connectors on there so that I can just heat them up and it'll tighten them up so that no water or anything can get inside of it. It's usually the best way to go. And when I say that it's half the cost, that was just half the cost to replace the fan, not including the blade, not including the compressor. So if you add those parts in as well, I could have looked at about a three to four hundred dollar plus repair when you know this all in, like I said, is I think it was like 150 bucks, if that, and I even bought extra parts so that I can cover the other compressor as well once something on there fails. So this is just me going through and going ahead and reassembling everything. The one thing I didn't do, I'm gonna find out here as soon as I reassemble this, is that I should have measured the wires because I think I end up being short. So it's just things I'm figuring out here that'll help you. I'm about to find out the reason that these are wires are short is because the motor's rotated, that I didn't put it in the right direction for the wires to be facing towards the uh, capacitor. So I will have to go ahead and unhook this and hook it back up in order for it to reach properly. So it's just little things you got to pay attention to, and this is things I should I always try to show people just because I'm sure everyone's going to be in the same boat as far as making mistakes. Um, I did this uh, repair actually about a year ago. I've had these videos sitting. I just haven't had time to edit them. But now that I have, I can re rest, rest assured it, everything worked out. Everything still works great. And um, I feel good about these instructions, and I hope that it helps you. Cool. Please feel free to subscribe. I try to put these videos up as they come up whenever I have to repair something and I can help you guys out. I will try my best to do so.